All right, and we are back. Plum Conference 2021, track one, day one, with Tiberio Ikim, who is a leader in the development of Volto, a thought leader in the development of Volto. Uh, he gave the Volto add-ons training last year and this year, which I found fascinating and also brilliant. And he's here to give us a presentation about something else he's come up with, which is the pluggables framework for Volto. Thank you, Kim. Um, thank you, Kim. I will uh, start to share my screen and um, give you a presentation. Um, okay. So uh, I'm going to give you a presentation on Volto pluggables, which is an experimental technology that already ships with Volto. Uh, but this is this presentation is more of an argument for uh, extensibility in the CMS UI and in Volto, uh, taking into consideration the shape of Volto right now. Um, and. If we look at the too long, didn't read version uh, of what exactly this is, because I, I, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the abstract side of things, about the, the pluggables, and I, I don't want to keep you too much in, in the dark. Um, if we look at the uh, what at what exactly pluggables is, is um, a way to design or uh, to uh, create pluggable things like toolbars where um, we have on one side, we have uh, a big slot, let's say, and on the other side, we have something that we push into that slot, but out of the component tree. So they're not direct children, but those fill slots, they come from somewhere else. And uh, the basic is just uh, the pluggable component, which is, with, with the, which is the slot declaration and the plug, which is the slot field. And uh, this, uh, um, this bit of code, uh, the implementation is Volto, in Volto is based on a React view slot. And uh, I'm the author of the sport in Volto. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about it, I guess. OK, so um, now that we got the basics out of the way, we need to understand what, it, what else is to learn about them. Uh, right now, we have two systems running in parallel, classic Plone and Volto. And at, some, at first glance, they appear to be somewhat equivalent. But I think Volto is a big evolutionary step for Plone. And to get similar capabilities in Plone Classic, you basically have to rewrite Volto. And pluggables is an example of a kind of thing that marks the departure from the classic static page or static page with GS, JavaScript based interaction, to real, really um, full page integra integration of uh, a dynamic components. And um, if we look at the big picture, um, uh, as you know, I work with Odd Web Romania, and our main client for the Volta website is EA, the European Environmental Agency. And we've been working with Volto for the last two years. Uh, we are a big contributor to the Volto ecosystem, and we are one of the early adopters of Volto. And many of the public EA sites are already on Volto, or they are in the process of being migrated to Volto. Uh, one particularity of these websites is that the CMS site is very, very strong. There is a lot of technical content. But we, as contractors, and I, as a contractor, um, we'd like to focus more on the tools to uh, deliver uh, that content and to produce that content, not necessarily on just mundane uh, presentation and variations of, of uh, the same thing. And with Volto, we've been able to make this process of publishing environmental data feasible for website editors and not just dedicated contractors, right? That's because we build powerful UIs for power users. And uh, I think by doing so, we maximize the investment of public money. And um, I have a picture here, just a, a quick, uh, quick, quick, quick uh, search in the Go GitHub uh, EA repository uh, on the Volto world. 
and I get already 91 results uh, for, for this. So EEA already has over 90 uh, volatile things. So that leads us to, to our concern or our question, how can we scale working with volatile? And uh, you can see our work landscapes. We have multiple websites, we have small teams. Uh, and for example, that's why the add-ons infrastructure was one of the big first contributions that we made to the Volta project. And uh, yeah, you see all, all of these add-ons, they're, um, they're nice, uh, already open source. Uh, you can uh, take a look at them. They are, they, there are full websites already fully published in, in uh, EA repository. They show everything from the deployment to uh, integration to um, absolutely everything. Of course, you know, there are many uh, other companies working with open source photo code uh, and uh, they do the same. And uh, those are Red Turtles, Code Syntax, Rover, Kit Concept, of course, and, and many others. And uh, if you look at the GitHub uh, readme page on for Volto, you can uh, get all of them. And of course, there's also the awesome Volto uh, collective repository for, for that. Okay, so, so far uh, we've scaled Volto with add-ons, but we are already starting to see the lim that some add-ons need to provide extension mechanism. Uh, and that's, that also applies to Volto. Uh, Volto also needs to provide more extension mechanism uh, that, than it already has. For example, one add-on, uh, the Volto Slate, it has three or four other add-ons. Add-ons to Volto Slate add-on, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, I can show you a ton of ways that we abuse, for example, the columns block or the tabs block because they provide uh, a generic data a storage mechanism for multidimensional grids. And we're just looking at uh, extending how that multidimensional grid looks like. It can be an accordion, it can be tabs, it can be who knows what else, uh, right? On the other, uh, <laughs> on the other uh, hand, one of the things that make uh, Volto really attra attractive is developer friendliness. And I've seen this many times already. New developers can become productive very fast with Volto. So in whatever we do, we have to keep things light and understandable. And we don't want to scare them with things like dependency injection or complicated component lookup in an OPAC registry. And um, yeah, we're, we're gonna look at scaling up um, Volto interactions because the nice thing is Pluggables provide a way to scale up uh, these interactions. And I'll walk you through a better understanding of this. So let's start with the beginning. Um, in the React world, the top bottom approach is really strict. Components pass properties to their, ch their children. Children can call functions passed down as props, right? And that's the uh, basis of React. And uh, in my opinion, it also makes it uh, great because I have experience working in systems with two-way data binding like uh, Vue.js, for example. And I know that uh, we as developers, we can create a mess uh, with it. We, we, we will arrive at a situation where we don't, we lose track of what happens in the system. But we need uh, communication between different component trees um, sometimes. And for, for that one, the uh, traditional solution is something like Redux or React content, context. And there is no magical solution that, that you can just say, OK, I have this component. And uh, anybody else can communicate with that component. And when I say communicate, for example, I mean, um, for example, changing the inner state of that component or uh, uh, calling something that's private in that component and so on. So this makes the components frozen in their implementation. And yeah, there is no protocol for ad hoc communication between uh, components. 
And we have to take into consideration that uh, the UI state is fluid. Uh, the global state uh, of the application as represented by the single page application that is volatile is always in flux. And it does, doesn't just model real data, you know, long content coming from the server, but also the state of interactions. And trying to model all these transient things as configuration would be really hard and we'll just end up relying on documentation, on lookup keys, and, you know, it's just gonna be messy. But extensibility enables also scalability and reuse. And because of program configuration, uh, Volto blocks can be recycled. Uh, a new view template can reuse the block data to show uh, things in a different way. The variations can extend the block schema model to add features new, uh, to a block. And these are uh, things that uh, we have recently added to Volto or they were there in Volto, or, uh, but we just made, uh, made it more visible and we make, made it more uh, frameworky, let's say. So yeah, but again, it, this, uh, this sort of uh, extensibility needs configuration. And uh, configuration means designing an API and an extens extensibility model upfront. Uh, in Plone, we have the Zoho component architecture and with it, uh, this uh, uh, you know, need for designing an API upfront is reduced and there's already established patterns and best practices for this because when programming pro, when programming clone uh, the zo component architecture is its most basic language everything is a component a zo component i mean uh, and writing an interface and an adapter is the most natural thing in plone and because of this we are pretty much guaranteed pluggability everywhere um, but the vault of pluggability needs are not just you uh, visual, but also uh, something that takes into account interactivity because it's a user interface. It's not just uh, a static HTML surface from a backend server, right? Um, a good example of pluggable UI in Plone is the Bullet Manager. You declare it once, you include it in the template, and it will render things inside of it. So that's why uh, we can look at uh, the pluggables as being uh, on-demand viewlets, let's say. But they are not. Uh, we've been doing websites with Volto uh, and <laughs> I mean, okay, viewlets didn't exist uh, in Plone since the beginning. Uh, and they don't exist now with Volto. Uh, and we've shipped uh, many, many websites without them. So it's not like we're missing uh, viewlets and we cannot continue without them. This is way beyond uh, that traditional use case. Okay, so uh, just to make things uh, relatively uh, clear, uh, or just to give you an, an analogy for uh, clone develop or existing clone developers, we can say that uh, the pluggable component uh, that is declared in uh, React as pluggable with a name would be most, mostly equivalent to uh, a browser viewlet manager, right? And then uh, with, with once we have that browser viewlet manager on screen, right? once we have the pluggable, we can then use a plug like a viewlet to push content into that pluggable. But, you know, clones, pluggables, and viewlets, uh, they're static, and you can trace the request publish cycle all the way to CGI and the beginning of web apps. Request, response, rinse, repeat, right? And with Vault being a single page application, the whole application state is continuously shifting and mutating. And um, to repeat again, the interactivity in Vault needs to go beyond. Yeah, let's just display this uh, additional thing here. It needs to allow intercomponent communication, passing down props out of tree. And uh, because it can do that, it can act as a generic framework. And React already provides, uh, let's say, out of tree rendering of components. There is already a portal in React DOM. Yeah, we're not talking about that because that is way too hard to, um, to control. Okay, so um, to give you a simple use case, uh, 
like more practical use case. Uh, we can have the pluggable with the above document content, and we can have uh, a component, right? We can say, okay, we're just gonna list, uh, we're just gonna show a list of my online friends just above the document content, and that could be provided by an add-on that can do that. Uh, so we would um, render the plug. Uh, it needs to say where it should render, which pluggable it should be. And we can also pass an order argument so that we can control um, somehow the order in, in which they appear. And that's similar to browser viewlet. Um, and of course, the only thing uh, we have to make sure is that our plug component is rendered. And for that one, the most basic thing that we can do, for example, is to use config up extras, which is kind of like, uh, let's say, head slot or something that uh, uh, Volto has that just that will just uh, render everything that's uh, in that uh, array of configuration. But there, are, there is advanced use case, for example, uh, a plug can override uh, another plug. Uh, and if we have uh, a plug with an ID delete button, uh, we can then render another plug with the same ID and it will override the initial plug, right? Uh, and uh, we get in, we might get into um, a sort of, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit later on uh, how exactly uh, this implementation of plugs and pluggables uh, works. We might get into situations where uh, we are fighting, let's say, uh, for which plug is rendered. And for that one, we have uh, a mechanism of controlling. Uh, the rendering, which is similar to React use effect dependencies. Uh, but the nice thing is we can actually read inside our plug, we can read data that comes from the pluggable. So imagine that, let's say we have a toolbar and that toolbar has in its context, in its closure, it has some uh, variables, it has some data. With, with the plugs, we can actually read that uh, data coming from the pluggable and we can interact with that data. And not just data, but also, for example, we can pass uh, functions, callables, so that we can uh, have plugs that send messages to the pluggable, right? Uh, it, it, so it can, uh, basically we can create with an add-on something that uh, mutates state into another uh, component that was not explicitly uh, designed to allow that uh, in sort of interaction that the add-on provides. And uh, another uh, thing uh, that I've mentioned, but uh, I, will, I will mention it again, and we have the example just because yeah, we, uh, this uh, presentation can serve as a reference. Um, the dependencies of, uh, of plugs can be used to control when the plug is rendered and re-rendered, just to make sure that, for example, our plug will, cannot, for example, be uh, overridden or uh, when some data is changing in the system, uh, our plug is back again online, let's say, or uh, rendered. Another uh, advanced use case is, uh, for example, um, that we, in the pluggable, we might intercept the plugs and we might uh, have them rendered in a particular way. For, so, for example, in the uh, toolbar example, we might say, okay, I'm going to have plugs, I'm going to support plugs, and they're going to be kind of like buttons, and I'll just wrap them into a particular wrapper or do anything with them. It's up to the plug where it renders. It's up to the pluggables, sorry, where it renders the plugs. And I have uh, this uh, pluggables framework is involved, though I've mentioned, um, it's not actually widely used at, the, at this moment. And uh, we are even learning uh, yet how to really 
know, take advantage of it. And that's that's my uh, way with this presentation of trying to make to popularize this technique and make it more public so that we 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 Volta developers are aware of this feature and we can uh, include this uh, framework so that our work is futurely extendable. So uh, what I'm showing on my screen is um, two add-ons. Uh, the first one, it renders the 15% first draft uh, button on the left. And that comes from Volto Workflow, workflow Progress. Now, uh, Volto Workflow Progress, and you can uh, look, it, look it up in the EA GitHub repository, it has a pluggable. And then there is another add-on called Volto Editing Progress that uses that pluggable to render the um, timeline <laughs> control on the right, the, the dots with the published and in publication and so on. Um, so that's the sort of, and, and it only shows up when the button on the left is hit, right? Or you're with the mouse over on it. So it's, a, it's an extension of an extension, practically. Um, and for example, another use case, and uh, this is one that is, let's say, close to my heart, um, is the Quanta toolbar. And uh, that's uh, because I anticipate, and uh, at some point, Victor will show uh, in this conference what exactly Quanta is and how uh, we envisage that uh, it will behave and look like. Um, but yeah, um, we can look at this and we can think, we can see that, for example, the toolbars are uh, very much um, study case of pluggables because they are highly interactive and toolbar as the placeholder, they are what, on what they show, right? Which buttons they show, they are highly dependent on the context. And uh, for example, with the Quanta toolbar, uh, the convention is that each block has a single toolbar, which is not the convention right now in Volto. And um, if we if we make sure that there is always a toolbar, we can have any block render something in that toolbar, and then uh, we can enable something like a really advanced scenario where you cannot really, really control what exactly is shown in that toolbar. For example, when we take uh, the EA columns block or uh, the slots that I'm going to talk about, uh, they, they have to be able to reuse this toolbar. And more or less, we don't want to hard code all of this and push, push this into a, a giant configuration registry where you, know, you, would, you would get lost. At least we give it a try. Maybe we'll we'll have to fall back to that. I don't know, but at least we can give it a try. Okay. So um, another another example, uh, for example, <laughs> is the Volto block style, which I have shown uh, at some point last year, and we are using it on our websites. And that add-on has to show a palette icon, and with it. Uh, it can provide wrapping in styling for the block. If we would have a, a permanent toolbar that we can rely on, then uh, that uh, ugly placement at the right top would not be uh, needed anymore because we could just plug into this uh, toolbar and so on. Uh, there are some limitations uh, that you have to be aware of with Volta pluggables. Um, for example, there is no uh, server-side rendering support for them. And uh, that's, I don't think that's a problem because uh, there, we have slots for things that are more configuration, let's say, and server-side rendering uh, dependent or um, where they are really, really needed. Uh, I see pluggables as more of for transient things like buttons, toolbars, and so on, which you know, they don't really need server-side rendering. Uh, I've already mentioned the dependency lists that you have to be aware of. Uh, and of course, the limited adoption that we have right now. And I've promised that uh, I'll go over the uh, implementation and just pseudocode more or less, because I, I don't want to, um, to 
go into too too much detail and uh, you kind of have to know a little bit of react to be able to follow uh, basically the pluggable pluggables provider is a context that we wrap all Volto content, content within all Volto components, let's say. It sits right at the top of the Volto rendering tree. And uh, it provides a content context and it has an inner state inside, right? And uh, the pluggable component will be rendered as a child in that uh, context. They will have access to that context and they can subscribe once they render they can subscribe and write in, into that global context. The same, the uh, plugs can do the same. Uh, so you can see here, for example, the dummy implementation for a plug, right? Uh, when the plug renders as a side effect, it can call a function to register a callable that will return some children. Um, yeah, I mean, it needs a little bit of uh, study, this bit of code. It's not that complicated, but of course. Uh, yeah. And the pluggable becomes a little bit simpler because we can just uh, grab a get plugs function from that global context uh, provided by a pluggables provider. And it can grab all the active plugs and just map over them and render them. And with that uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you for attending it and watching it. Thank you, Tiberiu. Uh, I'm always in awe when, when uh, I hear you working ideas out and figuring out how they're gonna turn themselves into production ready code. And it's, it's really been fantastic to have you working so hard, so heavily on Volto and helping the Plum community move forward. So thank you very much, Tiberiu. And uh, for those of you who are watching, please join Tiberiu in the Jitsi, which I hope you know by now is the blue button underneath the video frame. And he'll be happy to answer your questions and uh, maybe you can help him develop the ideas some more. Okay. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. See you.